Hopefully, this is enough of a prompt to bring your mind back to these particular kinds of diagrams we were looking at. Do you remember what we call these? These are, of course, Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams. Thank you very much. We're very familiar with these. We said that along with lists, arrays, and the other one missing? trees. Thank you very much. We said we use Venn diagrams as one of our additional tools for visualizing these probability situations. Think this is the real key I want you to get out of it. See if you remember. Under what circumstances? In the picture itself, it sort of tells you. Under what circumstances are Venn diagrams the way to go? Like, when are they the crucial, yeah, when the start to overlap? Very good. If you look at your numbers, right, and from memory, well, I guess you don't need to do it from memory, you can have a look. You can see, oh, we've got 12 friends, and you've got 9 people who ate beef for dinner, and 7 who ate apple pie. When you take that 7 and the 9, and you add it with the 1 who ate 9, but you're like, this doesn't add up. There's clearly some overlap between them, which is represented perfectly in the Venn diagram. So this is when we use them, but one of the things you might remember, and I kind of just sort of flagged it and then didn't do anything about it, was that it's quite tricky taking that information, like those words from before, and then filling it into here. Like it's not straightforward. You've got to sort of think about like, oh, what happens with those group of people, and then how do you do this? And it's kind of a, it's a vague process, right? So what we want to do is develop some notation to help us do this process slightly more logically and systematically, which is like, why I'd like you to make a heading which is set notation. Now, hopefully some of this will ring some bells from the past, but others of you, um, either it won't ring bells at all, or you're like, I've never, I've never met this, so that's why I'm unfamiliar with that. We could have shown you this last week, um, and given you all that theory, and then used all that to describe what's happening here, but I think it's much better to have kind of a concrete set of what's happening here, and then you can apply this very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's quite theoretical, okay? So underneath this, I want to talk to you about what is a set, and then how do we describe them, that's what this notation is, okay? So, let's start with the definition. A set is, very, very simply, it's just when you've got a bunch of objects all together. Like, for example, you guys are a set. Sherbrooke Technology High School is a set. The things in your pencil case are a set. So the most general way I would say that is, it's a collection of objects. It truly can be anything. Now, as you can imagine, in the context that we're looking at, we're often thinking about numbers, like a set of numbers, but it doesn't have to be. For example, have a look at this situation that we had before, right? You've got some sets here, some collections of objects. The two, the five, the four, and the one, what do they represent? They're not numbers in this case. What do they represent? I think I heard it. They represent people at the friends, at the banquet, right? So it's like, oh, okay, we've got, um, we've got, you know, Aaron and Johnny and Beth and all of these people who are in here, right? So they're our collection of objects. Now, how do we describe them? Well, let me give you some examples. And this is where the um, notation sets in, right? So suppose I've got my A set over here and my B set over here, right? I might say A equals, and then to indicate that it's a set, it's a collection of objects, um, you're going to need practice to um, draw this. Some of you might be good at it straight away. We use curly braces to indicate, okay, whatever's about to come here, it's not just um, a set of numbers, it's um, a collection of objects and it could be anything. So what did I say before? What were the names? I don't know. Aaron, Johnny, Beth, and so on, right? And then, of course, we start with the curly brace, so we're going to end. So all I mean here is these things in here belong to that set of people who ate apple pie or whatever. Okay. Now, importantly, I want to ask you this question. Do you think it matters whose name that I wrote first? It doesn't, right? In fact, that's why there's no order indicated here. So I could just as easily have written the same things but in a different order. That's a really bad curly brace. I always find the white ones harder to draw than the uh, curly brace. That's better. Okay. So please make note of the fact that order doesn't matter. Later on, this will become a little more important, but for now, we'll just find it away. Okay. If I then say I've got another set here, <coughs> set B, so the people who ate B, suppose I've got a few other people, like say, oh, I don't know. Let's just pick some random names, shall we? So, when I start to list out all these other people, right? Do you might remember when we were solving this question, what I was interested in was, for example, one of the questions was, who ate both 
So let's mm, let's put one more name in. So if I wanted to describe who are the people who are in both sets, who are in that overlap, who's in that five, right? The way I would use set notation to describe that is. I don't know if anyone's, some people will remember this from before. Yeah. Um, this upside down looking U without a tail on it. So this stands for A, and that symbol means intersection. Someone, I should write it in a different color. That means intersection. And what it would mean is the people who are in set A and in set B at the same time. So another way, like colloquially, I just think of that as the overlap. So in this case, I would have, well, the only one I've written down that's in both at the moment is, just have a look at my names. Mm -hmm. It's just Aaron in this case. There's probably a few others, right? So, <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm going to write down Aaron here. And I've got a few others, as you can see. I'm just too lazy to write all these. But you get the idea that these are people who belong in both sets. Okay. All right, now, in addition to having the intersection, I could say, what about all the people who hate either? and why or leaf. I inclusive of both of them, even if you don't have have to eat both at the same time. Okay? We use the same symbol, but we turn it back around the right way. So we have a B without the, sorry, a U without the tail on it. Um, and this symbol here, this actually does stand for a more helpful letter. The U kind of stands for this word union. Now when I say this one is the overlap, can you kind of visualize that fairly happily? Like so. If I say A union B, I mean you're anywhere within the circles. Anywhere at all. Okay? So when we use the word overlap, it kind of means and. That's kind of the clue inside the question, apple pie and beef. Here, the word that corresponds to it's not and. What alternative will we use? Or oh, thank you very much. Or apple pie or beef. So I'm gonna write down everyone who I've got in these two sets together. So let's start to write together. Now, these two are probably the key pieces of set notation that we really need, along with these braces that I've shown you before. They're not quite the only ones. I'll come back to these in a minute, so I've printed out some stuff for us. But before we leave off all of the, like, let's have a nice logical and comprehensive list anyway. Sometimes what we want to know, and it's what you can see drawn on the Venn diagram, is how many things. What's the number of objects in a set? What's the number of objects in set A, or what's the number of objects in set B? So we just write that like so, n of A, that means the number of objects. In this particular example with my apple pie and beef, what is the number of objects in set A? <laughs> it's inclusive of everyone inside the circle, right? So it's the two and there's the five, so what's my total? Seven, and you could say just in the same way that n of b equals. <coughs> Very good. Okay, let's see if you're on the right track here. If I now say this is the set of objects here a and how many there are, this is how many is in b. What if I asked you for the set, sorry, the number of objects in the set a union b? What would that be equal to? Feedback. What does A union B mean? It means apple pie or beef. Well, it's fine. You can have any of them, right? Um, does this include, if I say or, does it include this guy in here? Because that's them having both. This is them having both. So I, I've got someone sitting at the table, right? And they're eating both, right? And I ask you, is that person eating apple pie or beef? What would you say? That person right there. I think I'd say yes. Are they eating apple pie or beef? Like, yes, yes they are, right? Um, how would I <coughs> say I need to use a different word, I have to include something different? If I wanted to exclude that person, I wanted to only include people who hate one or this one. What words would I use? One and only one, right? Either or, so that word either is what indicates to you take away this. For now though, 
I'm actually inclusive of everything inside the circles, yeah? So can someone tell me what n should be in this case? It's 11, isn't it? Because there's that one on the other side. Okay, stay with me. Let's do the intersection. Have a look. This is the one I shaded in red, right? So this should just be the, five is just one group. 